What recourse do we have when our public health officials completely and utterly fail us? I don't know if we could have prevented COVID-19 from spreading widely in the United States even if everything had been done perfectly, but the truth is that we will never know. When this outbreak first started, visitors from the affected areas were allowed to fly into the United States without being properly screened, and as you will see below this is still happening in many instances. And once the virus started spreading on US soil, we needed to immediately test any suspected cases so that we could isolate them as rapidly as possible. But even though South Korea has managed to test more than 140,000 of their citizens, less than 9,000 Americans have been tested so far. The CDC revealed on Tuesday that 8,554 Americans have been tested for coronavirus, but the agency's director says state and local health labs are understaffed and ill-equipped to keep up with crisis. According to figures published on the CDC's website on Tuesday, 3,698 tests had been done in its lab, and another 4,856 had been done in public health labs. Can anyone out there explain why we can't do at least as good as South Korea is doing? So far, I haven't found a single person that can explain this to me. Even after everything that has transpired, victims at the very epicenter of the outbreak in the Seattle area that are showing symptoms of the respiratory illness are still not being tested. The Seattle area nursing home at the epicenter of one of the biggest coronavirus outbreaks in the United States said on Monday it had no kits to test 65 employees showing symptoms of the respiratory illness that has killed at least 13 patients at the long-term care center. The staff in question, representing more than a third of the Life Care Center's 180 employees, are out sick with symptoms consistent with coronavirus, and a federal strike team of nurses and doctors is helping to care for 53 patients remaining in the center. Are you kidding me? This is the biggest public health crisis that any of us have ever seen, and the virus has already killed a bunch of residents at that particular nursing home, but we still don't have enough kits to get those employees tested? I don't know if there are words that are strong enough to describe how badly our health officials have dropped the ball. Do we have to wait until this crisis is over to fire every decision maker at the CDC and completely rebuild it from scratch? To say that their performance has been horrifyingly bad is actually a tremendous understatement. Of course the CDC is blaming their problems on a lack of funding. U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention Director Dr. Robert Redfield said state and local public health labs are under-equipped and understaffed. The truth is we've not invested, we've underinvested in the public health labs. Redfield said at a House Appropriations hearing for the 2021 CDC budget. There's not enough equipment, there's not enough people, there's not enough internal capacity, there's no surge capacity, Redfield added. Actually, the CDC receives more than $6 billion in federal funding every year, and much of that goes into paying their salaries. There are 168 key employees at CDC who earn more than $200,000 a year, and those very highly paid experts were supposed to make sure that our country was ready for a pandemic like this. Now we are at a tipping point. The number of confirmed cases in the U.S. has more than doubled over the past 48 hours, and an expert that used to work in the White House is telling us that we are 10 days from our hospitals getting cream. 10 days. And thanks to the devastating impact that this outbreak has had on the Chinese economy, there are 30 different drugs that are already in short supply, and that list will grow with each passing week. At this juncture, it is going to be nearly impossible to get this virus under control in the United States. In an article that he just posted, Mike Adams outlined the steps that would need to be taken if we were really serious about ending this outbreak. Block all international flights into the USA from all countries close all borders and stop cross-border traffic shut down all domestic commercial air travel order all public schools, universities, government offices and churches to close cancel all public events, including concerts, conferences, etc. Quarantine all US cities, block all highways in and out shut down all public transportation, including subways, buses, taxis and rail enact nationwide medical martial law and prevent people from leaving their homes or gathering in groups of any kind. Needless to say, the American people are not about to accept such measures, and Mike Adams acknowledges that it would be a month of hell. These efforts might achieve a 90% suppression factor, which would break the cycle of the coronavirus within three to four weeks. In other words, America would have to endure a month of hell to stop the virus in its tracks. So this virus will just keep spreading, and the number of confirmed cases will just keep on doubling. 
Meanwhile, as I mentioned above, many travelers that are coming into the US from countries where this outbreak is completely out of control are still not being properly screened. US travelers arriving into John F. Kennedy International Airport from locked down Italy revealed that many passengers are not having their temperatures taken, despite a widespread coronavirus outbreak in the European country. In exclusive interviews with DailyMail.com on Tuesday afternoon, American travelers arriving back in the country from Rome said Italians remain unfazed by the deadly outbreak and are still out having fun. Considering the fact that the entire nation of Italy is now locked down, why are we still allowing flights from Italy to land here in the first place? There are now more than 1,000 confirmed cases in the United States even though we have done such minimal testing. As testing expands, the number of confirmed cases will rise rapidly, and that will cause the level of fear to dramatically escalate. Already, Costco stores all over the country are being raided by desperate consumers when they open each day. Just check out what happened at one Costco store in Southern California on Monday morning. Shoppers were pictured lining up outside a Costco store in Burbank, California, on Monday morning, with a queue of people and their empty shopping carts snaking through the parking lot, waiting to rush in and emergency stockpile goods the second the doors open. One eager customer, Jeffrey Schaefer, 45, said the line of shoppers continued all along the side of the huge wholesale store building, through the parking lot and back up the sidewalk. If our health officials had been on top of things from the very beginning, the outlook for the months ahead could have been very different. But now we are being told that we are past the containment phase and that officials will simply try to do their best to mitigate the damage that this outbreak will do from this point forward. This is a complete and utter nightmare, and it looks like we are still only in the very early chapters of it.